In this video, I will walk you through the process of making three collages using black and white cardstock that explore the Gestalt principles. I will also talk about design considerations for composition and a few techniques to use when cutting and gluing. So let's get started. You will need your glue stick, three sheets of white cardstock, two sheets of black cardstock, and a couple sheets of scrap paper. A pencil will also be helpful, and if you have a cutting mat, that's useful, but not necessary. So to begin with, we are going to be tracing our hands as a starting shape to work with. You will need two hands that are cut out of your black cardstock and one hand cut out of your white cardstock. We're starting with the hands just to give us a shape to begin to work with, but you'll see as the video continues that I start cutting these into more abstract and unrecognizable shapes. When I am cutting um, shapes that are a little bit more complex and have lots of curves, you can see that I like to cut them into um, smaller sections before I go in to do the detail work of cutting. That way the excess paper isn't in the way of my hand and my scissors as I am cutting. As I cut, you will notice that I tend to use the back of my scissors and cut in as long of strokes as I can instead of short choppy strokes. You'll also notice that my scissors primarily stays in one place and that my paper is being moved around by my opposite hand. The scissors is just a little small for my hand, so I have to um, adjust my grip every once in a while. The other thing to note is that as I am turning corners, especially small edges or curves, um, I am applying just a subtle amount of pressure to the scissors as I turn so that it's cutting as I turn and I don't have to open and close the scissors. The opening and closing action of the scissors is what tends to give you that choppy edge and we're trying to work on craftsmanship to really make a nice clean edge. You'll eventually also get an X-Acto knife in your kit. You don't have to use it for this first assignment, um, but if you happen to have an X-Acto knife on hand already, you can practice working with it. Again, the rest of you will get these in your kits in, um, after January 20th. The same thing applies with an X-Acto knife, at least for me, when I'm cutting. The X-Acto knife tends to stay in one place. I usually like to have the blade um, sort of pulling towards me as opposed to cutting off to the left or cutting off to the right or away from me. And I'm pivoting the paper around the blade, especially in those little turns. I'm also careful not to have my opposite hand behind the blade so as not to cut myself. And I also cap the blade when I'm not using it so that I don't have a sharp blade on my workstation. So you'll want to cut out your third hand and then we can get started. So each hand should be placed on an opposite background color of paper and each one will be its own separate collage. So I'm going to start here first with the black hand on the white cardstock. Now the hand is a very recognizable shape and a very recognizable symbol. And so if I go ahead and just cut off a fingertip, that's probably going to make you a little bit uncomfortable, especially if it's missing here in this composition. If I put it back, but give it a little space, it might make you feel a little bit more comfortable. Now if I cut another little segment and replace these with just a small little gap, your mind is going to start filling in all that missing information. It might even start seeing them as knuckles. 
if I totally close or remove that piece, then we have closure happening. Your mind probably completed and filled in that missing piece. But I want to play with the shape a little bit more. I don't want to just keep this merely as a hand. I want to explore some different Gestalt principles. For example, notice how the lines that are created by the cuts that I made and the spaces that I've made create the illusion that there is a string or a line going all the way through each one of the fingers. You could imagine in those white spaces that there's actually an invisible line connecting all of those. This is an example of closure. The same principle can apply right here, where if I remove those sections, you still will automatically fill in those gaps. Maybe those fingertips have tape wrapped around them. I can continue to play with this idea of closure by moving those finger sections further and further away until they maybe become less recognizable as fingertips. And what happens if that hand isn't centered but off to the left? and the fingertips start veering even further away. Perhaps the hand goes off the edge of the paper and becomes cropped, or maybe it totally goes away and I just start playing with those small little shapes. So as I'm moving elements around or shapes around on this picture plane or this white sheet of paper, I'm essentially composing an image and I'm looking for a moment when things start to click, when they start to feel like they are working together and creating an interesting solution to a problem. So I started thinking that maybe that hand shape was a little too recognizable and I wanted to play with fewer and smaller elements. And so I just totally removed that. Now these little shapes, which started out as fingertips, are maybe less recognizable as that, and I'm no longer concerned about keeping them in the order in which they began. You can also change the orientation of your paper. So at first I had it in portrait, and now I have it in landscape. Maybe your shapes fit better on the picture plane one direction versus the other. So my main Gestalt principle that I've had in mind for this first collage all along was this idea of continuity and how can we take these shapes and have our eyes follow a particular path. Now I've made lots of big moves and also several little small moves along the way. If you decide you might need some more elements, it's okay to go ahead and take the rest of the um, black shape and cut more elements out of it. All of that material is available for you to work with. Now, as I continued to play, I finally felt, found something that felt like it started to click. And just for a time reference, I've already been working on this collage for about a half hour um, between editing and speeding up. So just to kind of slow it down to show you that sometimes I make really subtle little moves, just again, looking to kind of crack the code to really figure out what this design and what this composition needs. So again, a little terminology. The picture plane in this image here is the white sheet of paper and the boundaries of the picture plane are the edge of the sheet of paper. It is okay for you to utilize the edges of the picture plane in order to create a composition that maybe makes it look like it is going off of or beyond that picture plane. So I've decided to commit to a composition and I'm going to show you some different gluing techniques that you can use now. So I made that shape just a little bit smaller. I have my scrap paper now and my glue stick. So I'm going to glue the entire scrap of black cardstock that I am gluing down, filling in the middle and then working my way off the edges onto that scrap sheet of paper. You want to be really careful not to get glue on the front of the sheet of paper or you will see it when your collage dries. This is something that you will just have to practice and the more that you practice, the better you will get. Once I have that um, fully covered with glue, I'm going to put it down onto my picture plane or my background. 
I put a little scrap sheet of paper under there because this scrap um, or this shape is larger than my picture plane. I'm going to show you how to trim it towards the end of the video. Before I press it down and make sure it's in the right spot, you've got a little wiggle room to make sure you get it in the right place before you push it down. I recommend another scrap sheet of paper to put on top of that shape when you fully press it down in case you have any glue on your fingers um, that will help it to not smear onto the front of the shape. For tiny little shapes, you might want to try taking some of your glue stick and putting it onto a scrap sheet of paper and rubbing that little shape over the top of the glue until that gets coated. You could even grab a tweezers <laughs> and um, pick that up and then just lightly set it where you think it goes. You have, again, a little bit of room for moving it back and forth before you commit to it. I even go so far as to try to make sure I use my thumb and my pointer finger for applying glue onto the shapes and then utilizing my middle finger and my scrap paper for really adhering it down. Um, these are just things that I've consciously or unconsciously um, sort of evolved as techniques um, through the process of working and that's what works for me. You should work to see um, what makes the most sense for you. And again, the more that you practice, the more that you do this, the more that you will understand what does work for you and what doesn't work for you. Perhaps you would like to just use the glue stick itself instead of putting the glue onto the sheet of paper, as you can see I just did with that last little shape. So I've got that full row glued down. And again, I'm working on continuity here, so thinking about that sort of dashed line on these little shapes creating this movement for your eye to follow from the left side of the picture plane to the right side. Now while I have committed to several shapes, there's still a little bit of play that I do towards the end here to see what's really working and not, not working for me. So I've made a few extra little decisions here, glued some pieces down, and then realized it would be useful to cut off uh, and remove this excess from the edge of the picture plane so I can really understand how the composition is working and if it needs one or two extra elements. So I've taken off the scrap sheets of paper carefully and I am very slowly using the edge of the white paper as a guide to cut off the excess black shape. Same thing along this line here, slow and steady. Again, if you have an X-Acto knife already and a corkback ruler, you could use that to trim off this excess. You'll just learn through the process of working and doing. So I've decided it needs one little element. That shape was a little bit big to land over the top of that element. So I've trimmed it down. It's okay to alter and modify these shapes you've cut from your hand. One last round of trying to figure out where this should go before I commit to it. So once you have everything glued down and trimmed, please take a photograph of your work and you can review the photo submission tutorials that I have provided on Canvas for some pointers on how to get um, images that are good representations of your piece um, for submission. Next, I am going to go ahead and work on the white hand on the black background. I'm gonna cut out some very different shapes for this one, so I give myself an opportunity to play um, with different kinds of shapes and arrangements and compositions. So I've decided to create these sort of long, skinny, um, sort of more soft and organic shapes. Again, you can see I'm not requiring you to use every single piece that you cut. So if you cut a sharp edge, you're welcome to make it a little bit more round and organic. In this design, I'm sitting on thinking about two different um, Gestalt principles, proximity and similarity. So this idea that I'm gonna group objects that are close together um, and they will form a relationship but also similarity, so grouping similar elements. 
as I'm cutting out shapes, they, besides the one I just cut, they have a lot of similarity to them. As I continue to work with this composition though, and these particular shapes, I realized that they felt too similar to one another and that felt a little bit boring. So as I started playing with arranging these elements and nothing really seemed to be clicking, I just gave myself permission to go ahead and start cutting them into smaller shapes um, and giving them different uh, lengths and uh, visual weight, cutting curves out of them, making some skinnier pieces. As things didn't feel like they were working, sometimes I would just totally start over with the shapes. Sometimes it's a good idea even to take a break, walk away and come back with a new set of eyes. Some of the shapes started forming too many associations like a figure or a smiley face. And I really wanted to kind of break away from anything that seemed too representational. Although I will admit as I was working with this composition here that I ultimately landed on, it felt a little bit like sky and clouds. Once you feel you have a strong composition, glue those shapes down, trim off the edges, and photograph the work as best as you can, trying to show us what it would look like if we were to see it in person. Please try not to over edit your images. Upon reflecting on this image, I'm not sure that I did a fantastic job really highlighting just one Gestalt principle. I was going between similarity and proximity, and I think that it's still utilizing both of those principles equally. Now that is okay to do, and oftentimes Gestalt principles will overlap, so you might find that you have a composition that doesn't fully communicate one, but maybe a couple. For my third and final composition, I am again cutting the hand into very different shapes to give myself an opportunity to really have a variety of experiences working with the same starting point and seeing what I can get different from it. I would encourage you to try this, but if you want to cut out a similar set of shapes from all of your hands to see how you can have the same starting point and give yourself different results, that is also just fine. In this particular composition, I'm really playing with exploring figure and ground relationships. Figure and ground can be thought of as the subject and the background, or also the positive and the negative space. Where the positive space is the subject and the negative space is the background. So two different ways of talking about the same compositional elements. When I say I'm playing with figure and ground, the other thing I'm talking about is that the black shapes here certainly pull and draw our attention to them, but the white space in between each one of those little segments also draws our attention to it, in some ways inverting the figure and the ground. The white shape that doesn't have any black in it also is a kind of prominent space that our eye is drawn to, and in that way we're inverting figure grounds. I will talk more about figure ground relationships in the rest of the quarter. So once again, make sure you're gluing all these parts down, trimming off any excess that went off the edge, and photographing the work for submission, trying to show us what it would look like if we were to see it in person. Try to have fun with the process, allow play to be part of your working process, and even take breaks and step away to come back and see things from a different perspective. All in all, this video took me over an hour and a half to film, and I felt rushed through the process. So be sure to leave yourself enough time to work on this project. Have fun.